Joining me now from our bureau in New York City, author of the new book, Finding My Place, and founder of the Exodus Movement, Elizabeth Pipko. Uh, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me. When I saw this video, it actually like made me cry. Like I just, I hated everything that I saw in that video. Uh, I can't believe that people would be targeted for having like a small gathering at their house. Yet, you know, when there's the Black Lives Matter protesters and rioters, like nothing's done, everyone kind of stands back. This is really chilling. And there's been a lot of complaints from the New York area about, um, you know, targeted anti-Semitism. Yeah, uh, hi, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, no, it's been really, really rough to witness. Uh, as a Jew, I consider myself, I'd say, modern Orthodox. I live in New York. I'm seeing this happen basically in my home, and that's really scary. And like you said, it's not happening for anybody else. Jews are often uh, in our history scapegoated when uh, in a time of crisis, and that's kind of what we're seeing in our country right now. These leaders feel that they can treat American Jews in this way because they know that they will not face attacks for um, anti-Semitism or anything else because people very often stand up for everybody else except for Jews. Yeah, and we see the Jewish community kind of rebelling uh, over the recent COVID-19 restrictions, not just the Jewish community, I guess uh, most of the places of worship and, and people who are religious because they see the hypocrisy and they're wondering, oh, why can't I go and pray? Why can't I go to synagogue? Why can't I go to church? People are getting fined for like even like just standing outside of church. I mean, it's really, really crazy. And I know that there's lawsuits against the governor of New York over the arbitrary rules and them feeling targeted uh, over the rules. Yeah, no, these rules actually, I don't know if people know, these rules were put in place over the high holidays. So not only were a lot of Jewish Americans not allowed to fight back or defend themselves, they didn't even know the rules were being put in place. A lot were not on the internet or were fasting or were, um, you know, praying at the time when these restrictions were put out. And they were caught off guard and by surprise by the new restrictions because they had no idea they were coming into place. Yeah. And then we see some of the businesses, uh, Jewish owned, uh, for example, it was Mixed Greens in Brooklyn. They had their doors open. They weren't like allowing customers to sit and dine inside, but they were ticketed and they had to fight back. Again, they think that this was anti-Semitic. Yeah, look, I mean, it's happening everywhere. And we've seen people fight back. We've seen um, this kind of, uh, I'd say, a rebellion towards, you know, this cancel culture. People are standing up for a lot of people, uh, but they're canceling uh, anybody uh, that stands up, I'd say, against whatever they believe in. And Jews just don't fall in that category. No one is getting, let's say, canceled uh, for standing up for Jewish people. And it's very, very strange. I see these leaders that are not afraid to come out and do these things to the Jewish community because they know that no one out there is going to say a word. Yeah. I'm wondering how this is going to play out politically speaking. Uh, we know that the Jewish community tends to vote Democrat for the most part overwhelmingly. We saw that in 2016. Um, there was a rally over the weekend. It was uh, Jews for Trump. Uh, I, sh I showed some clips from that yesterday actually on the show and some really terrible things happened there. Uh, rocks were thrown at the supporters of Trump. Uh, rocks, eggs, there was violence. And I was really disturbed, Pepper hardly spray. any media coverage of what happened there. And I, if that wasn't a hate crime, I don't know what is. Right, no, it was terrifying to watch. Um, at the same time, it's it's hard to shout anti-Semitism here because I think this is more anti-Republican, anti-Trump supporter bias, not that one is okay and one isn't. Yeah. But the fact that, like you said, it was not plastered everywhere was really, really scary. This happened in New York City of all places, and no one seemed to mind that there were people being pepper sprayed for supporting Donald Trump. Yeah, no, definitely the Trump supporter stuff. We see that all the time, the attacks against Trump supporters. But if you if you look at it from the Democratic side, if somebody looks at somebody wrong, that's a hate crime. But then when this happens, that's not considered a hate crime, and it's not even worth national news. Right. It, it's, it's terrible. Um, so, uh, like I said, politically speaking, Democrats... Jewish Democrats um, overwhelmingly support the Democratic candidate. Uh, but I have talked to uh, several people who are in the Jewish community who said uh, that th this time around they're going to switch their votes and they're going to vote for Trump, which is part of what you were doing with the Exodus movement was going around and speaking uh, to people as to why supporting Republican candidates, uh, specifically President Trump and everything that his administration has done for the Jewish community, why it would be in their best interest to support uh, this president. Yeah, so, I mean, we are seeing a lot of change, not just in the Jewish community, but around the country. I don't know if we're going to see a giant bump uh, in the election in a few days. I really don't think that we will. 
However, I am seeing it in the Orthodox community, which is really important for people to realize. Uh, the Orthodox community, I believe, in a recent national poll done by Omni magazine, uh, said that 83 percent would be voting for Donald Trump. And that is up from, I believe, around 55 uh, in 2016. So that's huge. And I think people are realizing not just that people are shifting their votes toward Donald Trump, but that people that normally did not follow politics as seriously are now getting very, very involved because they feel like their, their rights are being taken away. Yeah, you know, I, I find it interesting. So there is an article here from the Sun Centennial. It says um, basically that if President Trump is reelected, that there's going to be a danger in a second term. And this is uh, from the uh, one of the groups that keeps keeps track of anti-Semitism. But like, why would that go up under President Trump? And you think about, again, everything that he's done for the Jewish community. His his own daughter, Ivanka, is Jewish. His grandkids are Jewish. Uh, so I don't know why they always try to relate that to President Trump when there's really no connection there. Right. Uh, that was said, I believe, by Abe Foxman, uh, former head of the ADL. And I actually read everything that was said, and uh, in print, uh, if you look very closely, it does say that he does not believe that President Trump is an anti-Semite. I think that's really, really important to point out, because that is a disgusting, disgusting insult that has been thrown towards Donald Trump and his supporters for years now. Um, so there are people out there that do not think so, despite um, a lot of the media saying that they do, so that's important. And number two, it's important that, yes, people are anxious about the election. Things could get more dangerous after the election. And depending on what news source you get your information from, you'll believe it's being caused by one side or the other. But our leaders, people in power, people in any sort of you know, leadership positions should not be stroking fear amongst Jewish Americans or any Americans. They should be telling us to get divided, uh, get divided, sorry, get united around uh, whatever's about to happen in six days in our country. Yeah, the, the title here says, Fame, Anti-Semitism, Watchdog, a Abe Foxman Sees Danger in Second Trump Term. Uh, but we were warned about that first Trump term. Uh, that's what we were told, that it was going to be chaos in the streets yes. and we'd see all these attacks uh, against minorities and this and that. And obviously, um, you know, that didn't happen unless it was like Antifa and Black Lives Matter attacking, uh, you know, and destroying their communities for the most part. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me.